Hey guys, and welcome to this video on computing definite integrals of symmetric functions. So in this video, I'm actually going to show you some examples, but I'm also going to show you the proof, which I think is super fun and cute. Granted, my definition of fun might be different from other people's fun, but you know, it's good to expand your brain sometimes. It's clever. It's clever. So let's just get right into the theorem. So all right, you've got some function f of x and it's continuous on, it's got to be an interval, a closed interval that looks like this. So going from something symmetric is what we call it. So from the negative to the positive of the, the same number. So here's the meat of that theorem. So if you have an even function, then you can compute the integral by taking two times that same integral, but from zero to a instead of from negative a to a. And then also, if you know that it's odd, then the integral will just equal zero. So one thing I want to remind you of is just the test for symmetry. So a lot of times people forget how do you even compute or figure out whether something's symmetric. So this is really the, the key that we want to remember. And this will be very helpful as we go through the proof actually. Okay, so let's, let's talk about why this is true and we're going to prove it from a mathematical standpoint. So let's start with the case where f of x is even. So I want to compute this integral. Well, one property of definite integrals is that I can always break this up if I'd like. So I'm going to break this up going from negative a to zero. And then I'm going to do it again going from a, oops, from zero to a, sorry, zero to a. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna flip um, my limits of integration here. So watch this for a moment. So I'm gonna take this piece here and I'm going to, like I said, just flip the limits of integration. It will make sense why in a moment. So that part's gonna become that. And then this part I didn't change. Okay, so now I'm going to make a really odd substitution on this part here. So you'll see why I'm doing this in a moment. So if you're like, why, why would you even do that? It's, it's to actually help prove kind of what, what we're trying to get to. So I'm actually going to set my u equal to negative x. So I know that that's not technically in here. So we're going to have to make some adjustments and that's okay. So if my u is equal to negative x, then therefore negative u will equal x. Okay, so remember this part. Then also from this, I have to compute my du, which will be negative dx. And if I just wanted to solve for dx, then this would say that negative du equals dx. Okay, so I just kind of threw a bunch of things at you. So now what I wanna do is I just wanna kind of line up where, where we're at. So where I see this x here, I'm going to replace it with this piece here. So this x will become negative u. And then where I have this dx, I'm going to replace it with this part here. So with negative du. And so this is all going to mess ultimately with the sign over here. And so that's, that's one part, but we're still not done, right? So this is a definite integral. So I also want to mess with my limits of integration. So I have uh, just a couple more pieces here to do. So now if x equals zero, that would mean that u equals zero. So nothing's going to change for that first limit of integration. And then if x equals negative a, u will equal negative negative a. So u will just equal a. So now the last piece of this is I basically need to go through now and change these limits of integration with these parts in here. So hopefully you can kind of see all the, the different things I'm going to do. So now this becomes negative. So first let's flip our limits of integration. So zero stays at zero, negative a will become positive a. Now I said for x here, for f of x, I need to replace this with negative u. So this will be f of negative u. And then dx I'm gonna replace with negative du. Okay. And then the other part still didn't change. Okay, and so now, I would actually encourage you maybe just to take a second just to sort this out algebraically, just to convince yourself of this. So looking at this, these negatives here will cancel out. So this becomes zero to a f of negative u du 
plus zero to a of f of x dx. And now we can finally leverage the fact that we know that f of x is even. So if f is an even function, what would this mean that this equals? This, make, this means then, so if you just need me to remind you, it, it means that you get back to the function itself. So now going back to this, let's see, I need to clear a little bit of space. So let me move everything up. Okay, so now I've cleared some space. So I can rewrite this then as just f of u, right? That's <laughs> looks a little funny, doesn't it? Um, I'm not trying to offend anybody. <laughs> so, okay, so I've got this f of u du, so I've got this part here. And so now I can actually go back and go back and rewrite all of this really. So this, if my if I, this is my f of u, well, this actually, then if I were to place it back with my x, it would still be the same thing. So because of just the substitutions that we've made, this and this, I've, I've now basically manipulated it so that these two things are equal to one another. So this will become two times from, two times from zero to a of f of x dx. And again, if you're saying, wait a sec, what about this? You, you totally just can't waved your hand at this. Well, if I just really quickly want to say, so I've got my f of u, so let's just replace u back with f, or sorry, let's just replace u back with x. So using, coming back here, this was my original substitution, right? So I could rewrite f of u as f of negative x, which we still know will be f of x because this is even. And then this is just telling me what to integrate with respect to. So if I'm going to flip this back to f of x, then I would just, I wanna flip this back to dx because that's now what we're integrating with respect to. So that's kind of gonna be the idea here. So then th that proves the first part of this theorem. Okay, so now let's prove the other part of the theorem. So this first one was this. Now let's go to this. So let's go when the function is odd, why does this equal zero? So now I'm gonna assume that my f of x is odd. So I'll use this at some point. Well, we're gonna use the exact same setup from before. So I'm gonna go from negative a to a. I've got f of x dx and so similar to before. So I wanna actually break this up. And what I would encourage you to do here is, so we're gonna actually just approach it in a very, very similar, similar manner. So just like in the last proof, we're gonna flip our limits of integration here. And so now this goes from zero to negative a. And you're gonna make the same substitutions from before and you're gonna make very similar, like the same changes to your limits of integration. So I think this is actually a really great place to pause and take a moment to really quiz yourself to see how well you understood that. This really kind of is a good way to expand your thinking and challenge yourself a little bit. This is how you grow as a math student. So you've got all the work from the last part. So you know kind of the substitutions that you need to make. And you knew that at some point, like in, in the last proof that we did, that f of x being even came into play. So see if you can kind of now wrap your head around the logic with this one. And then when you think you're ready, hit, hit play. Okay, so like I said, so same set of tricks from before. So my u is still this negative x, um, therefore my negative u will equal x, therefore my du is negative dx, therefore my negative du is dx, so all the same stuff. And then just like before, so if x is negative a, then u will equal positive a, and if x equals zero, then u will equal zero. So all that stuff is all the same. So when I set this up, so I'll change my limits of integration. So now this goes from zero to a. This will become f of negative u, and then all of this times negative du. The other part is not changing at all. Okay, so now I have to kind of sort out all the signs here again. So notice that I've got this negative and this negative here. So I can rewrite now this entire piece as just f of negative u du plus this other part that we didn't change. And now here's where it matters that f of x is odd. So let me clear a little space. So recalling what it means to be odd. So an odd function has this property. If you plug in something negative, it brings out the negative of that function. 
So what this means then is I can rewrite this part here. So maybe I'll just underline it. Just this part here, I can now leverage the fact that this is odd. So I know that this will equal negative, the, the negative of this. So that's what this means. And then using very similar logic to before, now I can replace this with really just my, my f of x. So this will now be this. So this is the original thing I really had, right? And now this becomes really obvious. Here's one integral. Here's the negative of the integral. Obviously now they're, they're just additive opposites. So the whole thing will equal zero. So we've proved exactly what we want to prove. So, um, so this is actually a really cool thing then that you can do with symmetry. So when you notice that things are symmetric, you can just like, boom, go ahead and, and, and use these properties right away. So now let me show you just a couple of examples of, of how you could bust this out, I guess. So when you're looking at something like this, so probably in the back of your mind, one big hint is that you want to look at your limits of um, kind of these limits of integration. And if these are additive opposites, so negative four and four, or, you know, they're, they're exact opposite numbers, that's probably a sign that you want to just test the symmetry. And so then what you want to do is you just want to kind of evaluate this f of negative x to see what you get. So in this case, if I take negative x to the third plus negative x, what will happen with the signs? This becomes negative x to the third minus x. So that is indeed negative f of x. So because I can see that this is odd, I don't even have to do any other work. Just equal zero. Done. Boom. So that's the power of this theorem, and that's why we kind of like it. So, so when you can actually figure this out, like then you can just invoke this and be done. Okay, so what about this problem here? So now if I do the same thing, so I'm going to plug in negative x. So this becomes negative x to the fourth minus, so I'm going to um, go ahead and take that to the fourth and to the second. So this will become just x to the fourth minus x squared. So I get back to f of x. Okay, so now that tells me then that I could actually simplify this integral to this. And you might think, well, why would I even care to do that? So the, the reason why that's nice is I personally, when it, when it comes to evaluating definite integrals, gosh, I cannot write over here. I'm like my tablet's giving me all these problems. So when I am evaluating definite integrals, I would rather plug in zero usually than anything else um, because zero usually is just very simple to, to work with, right? So that's kind of why we like it. It can save you a little bit of work. So I need to take, oops, and I need to write this all as two times all of this. So this will be two times. Okay, so now we can work this out. So this is one fifth x to the fifth minus one third x to the third. So now I need to evaluate that from zero to five. So this will be two times, let's see, one fifth times five to the fifth minus one third times five to the third. But then this second part is all just going to be zero. So all of that drops out. So that's kind of why we like this. And you can see that you're going to get um, just a, a fraction here, or if you want to just turn it into a decimal. So I've got 1,166.67. So that would be what that would round to, or you can get the fractional answer of that. But so like I said, that just saves you a little bit of work in this case. So that, that's why we like that. So that that's it. So that's just something that you want to watch out for now when you're integrating and working with definite integrals. You can save yourself some work if you ever notice that. So thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you next time.